Right, uh, um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming along. Uh, good to see a good crowd of people here. I, I think the wet weather probably helps a bit with that. Um, there's a few other people who were, were going to come along for the day, but uh, we're best to get started now, and uh, they, they might come in at some stage soon. Um, you should all have a, a, uh, some slides and so on printed off in front of you if you want to make some notes along the way. Um, there's a few spares, Karis, if you can just grab them across the other side, maybe. Um, but uh, first and foremost, uh, for those of you that I haven't met before, um, my name's Hamish Chandler. Uh, I'm the manager of Sheep Genetics, based up in Armidale. Um, and we've got with us today uh, Will Chaffee, who is currently the Land Plan Development Officer, started with us at the end of last year, um, and Karis Jones, who's now the uh, Merino Selects Development Officer. So uh, we'll, um, we'll work through things uh, over the course of the day. Um, we, we'd like to keep the proceedings um, you know, pretty informal. Uh, so if you've got questions as we go along, um, please, you know, don't be afraid to stick your hand up and, and uh, ask questions. Um, you will have noticed that we've uh, got some audio-visual people here today. We are going to be recording the proceedings so that we can uh, cut it back into some uh, videos on each of the different uh, issues that we'll be talking about, data quality and so on so that we can put things up on the uh, Sheep Genetics website as an additional resource for people to go back and look at again so that uh, they, um, you know, if you need a reminder about management groups or genetic linkage or whatever, there's some resources on, on the uh, website. Um, but because of that, uh, we would like to capture what's, what's being asked and so on for the day. So um, if you've got a question, uh, please let us know and we'll, we'll hand a, a microphone around or at least repeat the, I'll repeat the question so that um, you know, people who uh, are viewing a video later on can, can understand what we're talking about. Right. so what will we be uh, going through for the day? Um, uh, uh, what's the agenda? Uh, so we'll just start out briefly with a bit of an overview of sheep genetics um, and the standard sort of, you know, what is an ASBV, uh, what's an index, and um, you know, how do we start calculating those things. After morning tea, uh, we'll be talking about uh, getting set up for, for sheep genetics, uh, recording data, and looking at things like management groups. Um, and then after lunch, moving on to uh, the mating module uh, that is now available through uh, Pedigree Master, and most of the commercial uh, software packages have a version of the mating module uh, to allow us to start recording better reproductive information to go into the analysis for um, calculation of, of our fertility traits, some um, number of lambs weaned and so on. Uh, looking at the reports that you get back from sheep genetics, um, how to interpret those reports, what do they mean, um, and we'll briefly cover off then on, on genomics, where are we up to with the use of DNA uh, information and how that uh, contributes uh, to the, the calculation of breeding values. Um, then to finish the day off, uh, looking at some of the functionality on the Sheep Genetics website, uh, very quickly covering off on mate cell that's now available uh, and what, what it is, um, and then a bit of a, a forum session at the end of the day uh, to make sure that you know, we've covered off on, on all of your questions. Um, so just to start off with the background about Sheep Genetics, um, you know, I guess what are the core principles that we operate by? Um, you know, sheep genetics is basically aiming to provide the, uh, the world's best uh, cross-flock uh, genetic evaluation uh, for sheep and, and for goats. Um, you know, and the things that we're aiming to do is you know, the speed and, and accuracy of results back to people. Uh, so most of you guys would already be aware that each of the analyses is run uh, twice every month. Um, so we aim to have results back to people within two weeks of data coming in. Um, I think at the moment that means that we're running something like 26 different analyses every month. Um, and we aim to, to work with uh, breeders and researchers to make sure that uh, we're getting the, you know, the latest research and development out there and implemented into the Australian industry. And importantly, that there's no impediments uh, to, to breeders being able to, to access the tools and avail, um, services that are available. 
In terms of development prin principles, um, you know, sheep genetics is a tool uh, for the sheep industry to use, basically. Uh, it's, you know, it's not the only tool. We're not asking people to forget about everything else that they've done. You know, sheep genetics is a tool. Uh, breeding values are a tool for you to use in conjunction uh, with other breeding practices, obviously. Um, but importantly, breeding values, you know, they've got to be accurate, uh, credible, consistent, and, and reliable, um, and have to be there and available across the range of, of uh, production traits that people are interested in and able to be applied to the, the different target markets um, that, that we're uh, targeting with, with our industry. So I guess, long story short, what's our goal? Uh, our goal is uh, you know, genetic improvement uh, for a sustainable and profitable Australian sheep industry facilitated by the world's best uh, genetic valuation system. So a bit of background to the development. Um, I guess a number of you would be aware, uh, back prior to the, the development of sheep genetics, uh, there were a number of different genetic evaluations. Uh, Lamb Plan has been up and running for quite some time, uh, since the mid-90s. Uh, prior to sheep genetics, there had been several different uh, merino evaluations. Uh, and the issue with that is that, you know, if someone's flock was in one evaluation, you couldn't compare results to, to something that had come out of a different evaluation. So, you know, it gives us a, a single national approach uh, to calculating breeding values uh, so that there's one um, national language for uh, uh, genetic merit and how to compare animals across different flocks. Um, there's a quality assurance uh, system in place to underpin the integrity of, of the uh, results that come back to people. Uh, we'll go through uh, a lot of that today. And there's linkage and accuracy standards for breeding values to be reported back to you as part of that, making sure they're reliable um, and, and credible. So who are we? Um, Sheep Genetics is quite a small team. Uh, most of us are, are based up in Armidale, uh, but uh, on the Merino Select side of things, we've got Karis as, as Development Officer and Dave Ruby handling all of the database work. Um, and on the land plan side of things, uh, Will uh, doing the Development Officer work, uh, so extension work and, and speaking to breeders, support to breeders and so on. Um, and Stephen Field, uh, who doesn't like having his photo taken, obviously. He doesn't get seen out in public very often. Uh, doing the database work. So Stephen's actually based uh, in, in Dubbo. Uh, and then there's uh, myself as manager and Nicole and Fiona uh, in the office doing project administration work. So uh, some total, there's seven of us who are um, directly within uh, Sheep Genetics. We obviously work very closely with uh, staff at AGBU, the Animal Genetics and Breeding Unit at the University in Armidale, who do a lot of the development work for the analytical, analytical engine. Uh, we work closely with um, MLA, AWI, the sheep CRC and so on um, to, to make sure that you know, there's a consistent message going out there to, to industry. Uh, we rely heavily on um, service providers who are out there uh, who can provide additional support for breeders with uh, data management, um, interpreting results and so on. Uh, because we are such a, a small team, you know, it's difficult to, to get around and see everyone. So we do try collaborating as much as we can with other external service providers. To give you an idea of the uh, sort of numbers of flocks that we're dealing with, um, currently we've got over 850 flocks uh, in Australia who are clients, um, and there's uh, additional clients in uh, New Zealand, uh, Merino clients in New Zealand, uh, North American um, National Sheep Improvement Program we, we run and so on, scattered clients through uh, South America and, and some other places. So internationally, um, more than a, a thousand flocks that we're doing work for. Um, you know, the land plan evaluation, we've had pretty solid numbers there for a long period of time. It's quite a, a mature product at this point in time, so it's uh, reasonably stable. Uh, a few losses there due to retirements and people amalgamating, you know, people who'd had two or three studs dropping back to one main stud. Um, but it's, in, in reality, pretty stable numbers-wise. Uh, the big growth at this point in time is in interest in Merino Select and flocks wanting to join up to, to Merino Select. Um, what are we achieving in terms of rate of gain uh, in industry? Uh, 
Typically, we work on greater than 70% of terminal size, so pole dorsets, white suffix, suffix texels, and so on, uh, that are being sold each year have got breeding values available. Uh, rate of gain, we believe, upwards of uh, $2 per U joined per year. Uh, maternals, uh, bottle esters, Coopworths, Corydales, and so on, around about 45% of rams sold a year. Uh, you can see they're upwards of about $1.75 per U joined per year. Merinos, currently somewhere around about 30, 35% of rams sold. Um, but as I said, that's where our, our real interest and growth is at this point in time. Uh, somewhere around 70 cents to a dollar per U joined per year. And I think as we get more people, a bigger proportion of the industry coming online and using um, the tools more effectively, we're, we're only going to see that improve. This next slide is a little bit out of date, but just gives you a little bit of an idea of where some of the numbers are coming from. Uh, for the terminal analysis, uh, the bulk of our numbers are obviously in pole dorsets and white suffix, um, both accounting for now between 43 and 45,000 animals a year coming in for each of those breeds. So across the, the terminal land plan analysis, we're taking in somewhere around about 130,000 new animals each year. Um, in terms of uh, overall for the different analyses, uh, you can see there that um, the green line is, is the maternal uh, analysis. We're taking in uh, somewhere around about by now 50 or 60,000 animals a year. Uh, the terminals have improved since that point in time, or 100 and upwards of 110, I think up to about 130,000 animals a year. Um, merinos and dunies are shown by the blue line. That's now improved to the point where we're taking in 130,000 merinos alone. If you add dunies in, it's up to 157,000 animals with records coming in a year. What are the, some of the things that um, you know, have progressed over the last 12 months or so? Um, some of you will have just seen a report come out this week, which has got the update for the year in terms of changes to genetic parameters and so on for, for Merino Select. Uh, so Merino Select is now analysing uh, fleece traits in the post-weaning age range. So previously we've only been able to come down as low as, as yearling. Um, Post-weaning fleece traits can now be included in the analysis uh, down to eight months of age. Uh, so for those of you who are shearing young rams fairly early, uh, that's going to make it easier to get that information included in the analysis. Uh, if you're going down that road, I think it's really important that you also make sure that the animals that are retained in the flock longer term are also weighed uh, in you know, hoggett or adult age ranges so that we can make sure that we're doing a good job of uh, estimating sort of the lifetime productivity potential of those animals um, and you know, how much wool is likely to be you know, cut off animals in, in the adult stages. Um, also changed a few things in terms of adult uh, fleece weights and uh, adult weight and adult fleece traits. Uh, we've now got a repeated measures model in place. We'll talk about it a little bit later on, but can now use uh, up to three uh, repeat records for adult traits. Uh, Will and I have recently been down in Adelaide, uh, well, down at Gaul or down near Adelaide uh, for the scanner uh, training and accreditation workshop uh, that we've, we've been doing just recently. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, mating module is now available for recording reproductive information. Um, introduced some new tools to help with rate of genetic gain. Uh, so there's some more things available on the sheep genetics dashboard that we'll be going through uh, and mate cell is now available. Some of you might have used uh, TGRM previously. Uh, mate cell allows you to do similar things to TGRM uh, in terms of uh, helping allocate matings to uh, uh, maximise your potential rate of, of genetic gain uh, but at the same time minimise your rate of inbreeding. Um, so, you know, very useful development. Uh, and then more recently there's been quite a bit of work in uh, developing an um, app to go on mobile phones and so on to help commercial producers select, bre um, select rams based on breeding values without having to have so much of a detailed understanding of what breeding values are. So that work's been going on in collaboration with the Sheep CRC and Telstra, uh, and I'll talk briefly about that later on as well. 
Other things that we're working on currently uh, that will be continued to work on over the, 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 the coming year, um, updating indexes further, uh, work on including eating quality traits in particular into indexes, uh, starting with the, the terminal sire breeds. Um, the sheep CRC and so on are also working on uh, ways of improving benchmarking for commercial flocks, uh, both through the use of breeding values for rams that they might have bought in or looking at the use of genomics so that if you've got uh, you know, potential uh, commercial clients out there that haven't been using breeding values until now, they want to know where would they be sitting at the moment so they know is this ram going to push them in the right direction or not. That's what some of those uh, benchmarking projects are about. Again, helping commercial guys understand how to, to utilise information. Um, Ramping up genetic gain is a project that we've uh, uh, been wanting to get started. It's uh, been pushed back for a couple of months because of the app development work, but um, looking at better reporting options, better tools to assess individual flocks for what's their current rate of genetic progress? What can we do to help improve that? You know, is there um, a heap of management groups that aren't effective in, in that flock, for example? Can we do a better job of grouping animals? Um, is it selection intensity? Is it the use of breeding values? Um, meaning that people are or aren't you know, going ahead at a certain rate. Um, and the idea behind that is one, to allow us to be more proactive in identifying uh, how we can help flocks, but also allowing service providers uh, access to information to, to go and be a lot more proactive with, with their clients as well. Um, and of course, communicating the benefits, trying to you know, do more extension and get more information out there into the industry. So I guess that's enough of me rabbiting on for the time being about what uh, sheep genetics is, you know, what we're doing at the moment. Um, I'd you know, like to quickly go around the room, I guess, and uh, just get an idea from you guys who you are, uh, you know, what sort of enterprises you're running in, in terms of what breed and, and so on, um, and, and what you're hoping to get out of the day. So uh, if we can just work our way around the room. Um, you know, I guess just to, to kick off, as I said, my name's Hamish Chandler, uh, manager of sheep genetics up in Armidale. I started with sheep genetics as land plan project officer back in 2009. Uh, previously, I'd worked in the beef industry um, on the breed plan side of things. So I've done similar things for about five years in, in, uh, in beef cattle, um, extension work for, for breed plan. Uh, and my wife and I have run our own farming operation up in the New England since about 1998. Um, at the moment, pretty much all merinos. It's been a bit dry in the last year or two, so all of the crossbreds and that sort of thing have gone. So um, because I don't have enough to do with my time, I, I breed a few merino rams for our own use as well, just, just to keep myself entertained. So um, anyway, if you want to just uh, go around the room, who you are, um, what you're running, and, and what you'd like to get out of the day. Um, Robin Cartwright, Kyrob Merino, started Lagan, and um, we're just starting out with ASBB, so here to, to get a good grasp on how we'd all do it. Thank you. Uh, the other half, Kim Cartwright, Kyra Marino stud. Um, yeah, basically what Robin said, and um, try to improve through the ASBV. We're a, just a full on self replacing Marino flock stud. So, hope we get a lot out of today. Uh, Adam Mort from Mudgee, Hilltop Marino stud. Uh, just trying to update as much information as I can get. Um, run a fine wool stud and um, targeting a lot of the the, um, the maternal genetics and the, and the meat side of things so that the cull portion of our merino flock which are joined to White Suffolk so, um, are going to really drive the profitability of that, that end so both sides of our business are mm -hmm. going as well as I can get. Uh, Alistair Kelly, we're at Wongarbon uh, mixed farming enterprise with a Dorset stud. Uh, I guess one thing I'd like to get out of today is how we could educate our buyers of rams, how they could better use ASBVs and get the most, most out of our rams. Uh, Pat McNeil, I work for Australian Wool Network based in Goulburn, uh, involved with um, uh, ram selection and, and uh, such with clients. 
Dennis Stewart, also Australian Wool Network at uh, Crookwell. Uh, yeah, like Pat, we buy a few rams for people and we're finding our commercial producers are, um, are very interested in buying rams with ASPVs, so we need to keep ourselves up to speed with what's going on. Uh, Doug Picker from Bigger. We've got a self-replacing merino flock and a pole merino stud, and this is our fifth year in Merino Select, so I was just here today to pick up on a few new things and uh, improve my own operation. I'm Sarah Strawn, I'm actually with Meat and Livestock Australia, uh, and so I'm the Communications Manager covering Sheep Genetics and the Meat Standards Australia program. So MSA has been my background in MLA uh, for the last 15 years, and just picking up some new stuff with Sheep Genetics, so I'm really keen to talk to and hear your stories today as to what success you're having with the Sheep Genetics Program. I'm Megan Rogers and I'm a service provider and have a, a consultancy business based out of Forbes. Um, I'm here today to uh, just make sure that I'm up to speed in terms of um, what's going on in, in this space uh, for, for that off-farm part of my uh, business and in my spare time my husband and I have got a mixed farm um, with a merino and a terminal for breeding program as well. Um, I'm Amy, I'm studying a Bachelor of Agriculture in Armidale, just doing work experience with Megan and we've just got a small merino property in Western Victoria and I'm just hoping to get a better understanding of ASBVs and how they work with sheep genetics. I'm Murray Conan, I'm yeah, with Glenwood Merinos and just trying to find out a bit more where a ASBVs could be used. Uh, yeah, Norm Smith, I've lost my voice a bit, but uh, Glenwood Merino start here at Wellington. Um, we've been measuring with sheep and eggs for 10 years and um, just here for an update and see what's new. Uh, Scott Bryan, um, Bellalana Merino stud, uh, just here locally in Wellington. Yeah, just here to um, find out how to better um, get all the data ready for sheep genetics and, and find out about as much as I can about it. Uh, Chad Taylor from Mumblebun. Uh, been using ASPVs for a while, uh, keen to hear what's new, particularly with the genomics and the meat eating qualities and anything else that's, uh, that's new in the game. Yeah, Mark Kieran, Gallon Gamble Marinos. Uh, here today to get a better understanding of data collection and be better knowledge of the different indexes that are used in Merino Select. Yeah, John Fittler, just started working for Mark in the last eight weeks or so, um, originally from Armidale. Just came here today to sort of learn a bit more about um, sheep genetics and ASBVs, just to be able to do my job the best way I can for, for Mark. So. Yeah, Gus Kelly from up at uh, Warren Garvin, brother of uh, Alistair over there. Um, yeah, we have the, uh, terminal size, uh, Paul Dorsett's up at the Warren Garvin, and just here to um, hear if you get a few updates and... Um, Keen to hear about the new mate cell part of uh, the software programs you got going. Kate Severe from Young Girl Grow Mark Genetics and Young. Um, I've been using Lamplan ever since it started, and in fact, I've been measuring for 20 years when it was a meat sheep testing service. Um, I'm a little bit left of field in that I'm breeding rams that. Um, are suitable as a maternal sire. We, we're selecting maternal characteristics, but we run them on the terminal data set. And the grow mark originally started in Tamworth. And what we've done carefully since 2000 is introduce pole dorset genetics so that we've got good growth muscle, but not the shoulder issues and other lambing issues that can happen. Um, so we've got a carcass animal with a crimped wool, but because I'm run on the terminal data set, I can't be compared with people like Bordelesters and other maternals. So there are actually four options for using rams, which is really good for the commercial breeder, but the commercial breeders find it hard to understand this stuff, and we need to explain it simply, so it's great that you're moving on to do that. Um, the other thing is I'm really interested in the mate cell to actually increase the genetic gain and all the other stuff like the blood cards and all the new things that are happening. Um, I'm Stuart McMurney, we are La Merino Stud. 
Um, I'm possibly the odd one out because I'm not with ASVVs, but I come here for a better understanding of what's going on. Yeah, I'm Gary Cox from uh, Langdean Marino State over at Dunnydoo. I've uh, been a member of Sheep Genetics for just 12 months now, so um, I've really come here to learn and understand it a lot more and I uh, really want to get a better grasp of accuracies. Stu Hodgson, uh, former professional sheep classer, now with AWI, and uh, I'm just here to get a broader understanding of um, ASBVs. Uh, Mark Mortimer from the Santa Plus Group Breeding Scheme. Um, I'm also on the Sheep Genetics Advisory Council as well, so I'm here for myself to start the date and also be available to for people in the industry to come and talk to me and you know, if you've got any issues about sheep genetics that you might want to talk to the staff about, come and have a chat to me today. Uh, good day, George Sims, uh, one of the service provider that, providers that Hamish was talking about, I guess. So I've just gone through their muscle scanning training and accreditation, so here today is a bit of a follow up. I'm, <coughs> I'm John Bennett, uh, a retired resident of Dubbo, but the uh, I uh, give the support, some support to a newborn Lester Stud. Been operating four or five years, and uh, Gina will tell you all about that while we're here. I'm Gina Parks. Um, together with Andrew, my husband, we run Linwood Border Lester Stud, just here in Wellington. Um, we are using ASBVs, but I'd like to in increase my knowledge of ASBVs in order to. Uh, be able to speak to our buyers which we um, just on a more commercial level and try and ascertain exactly what they're trying to achieve um, as a maternal sire we don't have much uh, say in what our rams go what merino ram or merino use rather they, the the um, borders go over I'd like to be able to go and visit our, our our buyers and speak to them and work out a plan and a progress plan for them to look at um, just increasing their value and a commercial value and adding value to basically the whole Merino flock. Hi, good morning. I'm Victoria Patterson. I'm from Canella, White, Suffolk and Pole Dorset Stud near Canoundra. Um, I wanted to come here today to um, ensure we're using correct management groups and ensure that our data collection and quality is, uh, is up to scratch and how we can actually utilise it uh, to, to the max to get more out of it and the, the complete land plan program. We've been using land plan since 2005 uh, and found it very useful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Beatrice. I go to uni at Armadale, but I just work on the stud at home and I'm normally the one who <laughs> does the land plan entering. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lachlan Patterson. I'm Canelo White, Suffolk and Powell Dorset Stud and I'm basically here to learn about different management groups and I'd like to get that right because we run our sheep pretty hard and I'm not sure if I'm entering the right groups depending on how we run them. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Mortimer, uh, Centre Plus Ram Breeding Nucleus. Um, here to brush up. We've been using breeding values for as long as they've been available. Um, and we'll have to brush up on a bit of the latest technologies. I'll jump in. Uh, yeah, Will Chaffee. I um, yeah, started, as Hamish said, I started in December. And I look forward to meeting you all. I don't think I've a few new faces here for me. So if, you, if, yeah, if I don't come and see you today, just make sure you say good day to me before you walk out. Um, yeah, from, I just finished doing ag and business in Armidale last year and so pretty fresh onto the scene and before that I jackarooed on a merino stud near Warren so been involved with sheep um, for most of my life uh, off a sheep and cattle farm near Tamworth and yeah very happy to be here and yeah look forward to all the questions you guys have through the day. Thank you. <coughs> oh, I'm Royce Munro, I'm up the odd way down, I'm a commercial um, merino breeder. <coughs> I've um, unfortunately had to restart building my flock um, because we had a good flock of, uh, but it had to be disbanded for family reasons and we were on Merino Select and making very good progress and 
So I'm, I'm starting over again, so I'm just keeping you in touch with everything that's going on. Thank you. Um, so I'm Karis, I'm the Merino Select Development Officer. I uh, just started with Shape Genetics in March and moved over from Western Australia. Uh, originally from a Merino stud over there, um, went, did ag science in UW at UWA, and from after that I worked for Murdoch University in the Department of Ag in maternal efficiency and research. So a bit of a jump, but the genetic side of it's where I've always been a bit more interested. So yeah, as Will said, come and meet me if um, I haven't met you before. There's quite a few faces that I'll be able to put to names so, and emails, so it'll be good. Right, that's great. Um, obviously, you know, we've got a reasonably diverse group of people here with different, um, you know, levels of, of knowledge and all the rest of it. So, you know, I, I think with most of our um, regional forums, most of the benefit for, for people comes from the, the discussion between yourselves. So, you know, if, if there's, there's questions to ask, you know, uh, please, you know, jump in and, and, and ask them. Um, so, we'll, we'll do our best to cover off on uh, all of those points throughout the day. Um, you know, the day is structured around uh, collecting good quality data and getting, you know, good results out the other end. So, um, for the, the few of you who are more u interested in the end user's perspective, how to use breeding values, um, you know, if we don't cover off on that well enough for you, um, make sure that you, you come, and, come and find us and, and ask the questions specifically that you need answered uh, before the end of the day. So, um, that's enough from me for the time being, so I'll throw over to, to Karis to, to get, start getting into the nuts and the bolts of the day.